Let's break down the top five outfield prospects up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in Five. Welcome into FBT in Five on Saturday, December 9th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris, the Welsh. Let's take a look at the Welsh's top five outfield prospects entering 2024. And we'll start up top with uh, two awesome names that should contribute this season. Wyatt Langford of the Texas Rangers and Jackson Churio of the Milwaukee Brewers. Wyatt Langford, the rich get richer. Welsh, the Rangers just won the World Series. They're about oh. to add a guy that could be hitting in the middle of their lineup. He was just drafted fourth overall in this year's draft. He crushed it at every level. He hit 360, 10 homers, 12 steals. The early ADP, we're looking at uh, around 164. So people are very bullish on Wyatt Langford right away. Jackson Churio spoke about him a lot recently. Just signed an eight-year extension with the Brewers. Sounds like he will also be up on opening day. Three drafts since his extension was announced. The ADP is 142. So what do you think about these two guys? Who would you rather have in redraft? For this year oh who would i rather have this is the toughest one because i think the st stolen bases are even more predominant with cheerio and we have a small sample size ish with wyatt langford obviously a great college bat put up huge hard hit numbers the thing that gives me the slight lean to wyatt langford is the plate discipline cheerio made huge steps from last year to this year cutting his strikeout rate down i think from like 27 percent down to like 18 percent, which is huge big strikeout numbers good power easy swing but we've got more walks than strikeouts coming from wyatt langford who moved four levels he stole double digit bases he hit double digit homers hard hit numbers through the roof and you have a team that wants to should and wants to be aggressive. I'd also point out there's another guy in the Rangers, by the way. The the other thing we can take a look at is there's a guy we're going to talk about on this list who's on that Rangers for prospects that might be some form of a liability that gives White Langford even more of an opportunity from a righty lefty split. So I think Churio might have some would argue maybe not the biggest upside. I would say the biggest upside here because there's a, a Ronald Acuna profile that's sitting in there, and you know what? It might come out, but I think from a safety perspective, Wyatt Langford looks like, and I think his steamer 600 gets close to a 2020 guy. I'd probably go with him with the plate discipline. And I would argue and say that if both this moment were guaranteed starting jobs, they might be inside the top 100 of a majority of drafts. All right. The number three outfield prospect, Dylan Cruz with the Nationals. He was the second overall pick in this year's draft. Number four was Evan Carter from the Texas Rangers. We saw him late in the season and into the postseason perform admirably with the World Series champion Texas Rangers. And number five is Jason Dominguez from the Yankees, who had a whirlwind of a year, which unfortunately ended with him undergoing Tommy John surgery, so we won't see him until the second half of 2024. I want to ask you about Evan Carter here, Welsh, because the ADP, people are very bullish early on here. 126 is the ADP, so you got to pay a big price. I think the speed will be there, the batting average, and OBP I think will be there as well. I have some questions about how much power we get. He has struggled against lefties in the minors as well. What are your thoughts on Evan Carter and this early ADP right around 126? I see why he's above Wyatt Langford, but I think when we get to March, we're going to be like, yeah, Wyatt Langford is over Evan Carter. I think the plate discipline is great. Hitting three and four in a World Series speaks wonders to what they think of the kid. Running RBI totals could look solid. I'm not sold on the power. Not even necessarily sold the the stolen base numbers could go crazy. You might see Evan Carter hit three for this team the entire season. And are they going to want him to run at that same clip? I'm not saying they won't, but the lefty splits worry me a little bit. So I think at the end of the day, White Langford probably takes this over, but Evan Carter might have a few more at bats. But hey, listen, Evan Carter is probably one of the early front runners for uh, AL rookie of the year. You can't take that away from him, but the power numbers put a few things into question, especially when comparing to guys like Jackson Churio with the power speed and Wyatt Langford with not only the power speed combo that looks to be bigger than Evan Carter, but uh, maybe even a little bit more plate presence with the walks versus strikeouts. All right. And last point on Jason Dominguez. We did get a report recently from Aaron Boone that Dominguez is not guaranteed to be the starting center fielder as he returns from injury. Now they went out and made all these trades, obviously, 
Look like they're going to be loaded in the outfield with Juan Soto, Aaron Judge likely to play center field. They got Alex Verdugo. They got Trent Grisham. So there are some questions in terms of uh, will they just plug Dominguez right back into the lineup as soon as he's healthy? I'm not so sure. Keep that in mind. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>